The Life of Monkey D. Luffy, One Piece, Part 1 Monkey D. Luffy, also known as Straw Hat Luffy and commonly as Straw Hat, is the main protagonist of the manga and anime One Piece. He's the founder and captain of the increasingly infamous and powerful Straw Hat Pirates, as well as one of its top fighters. His lifelong dream is to become the Pirate King by finding the legendary treasure left behind by the late Goldie Roger. He believes that being the Pirate King means having the most freedom in the world. Born in Fusha Village, Luffy accidentally ate the Gomu Gomu no Mi at age 7, which turned his body into rubber. He also met red-haired Shanks, who owned and gave Luffy the very straw hat that has become Luffy's signature accessory, having gifted it to the boy as part of a promise for them to meet again someday. Luffy is the son of the revolutionary leader Monkey D. Dragon, the grandson of the marine hero Monkey D. Garp, the sworn brother of the late Fire Fist Porkas D. Ace, and revolutionary chief of staff Sabo, and the foster son of Curly Dadan. He is one of the few people in the world that carry the will of D. Luffy has gone up against numerous global powers around him, starting with fighting the most powerful pirates in the East Blue and moving to clashes against the Marines, Seven Warlords of the Sea, World Nobles, and even the Four Emperors of the Grand Line. Emerging victorious in a majority of these battles, Luffy's accomplishments and heritage have caused him to be labeled as a dangerous future element, earning the wrath of the Fleet Admiral Sakazuki, the Marine Headquarters, and even the World Government. Luffy also has a penchant for attracting followers and has unwillingly been named the leader of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet, consisting of seven pirate crews who swore to come to his aid whenever he wishes. After learning of this and his exploits against the Big Mom Pirates, the press has labeled him the fifth Emperor of the Sea, though many prominent figures consider this to be exaggerated. These acts, among other things, have given him his current bounty of 1,500,000,000 berry. Having had a bounty of 300 million berry before he arrived at the Saobody Archipelago, Luffy is one of the 11 rookie pirates who simultaneously reached the Red Line with bounties over 100 million berry, which was received from the situation in Arabasta a group which would go on to be referred to as the worst generation, with the addition of a twelfth. Welcome to the Amagi! In today's video, we're going over the life of Monkey D. Luffy. We're almost at a million subscribers, and we'd really appreciate it if we hit it by the end of the summer, so if you enjoyed this video, you know, just check out if you're subscribed. YouTube sometimes unsubscribes users from channels, so even if you think you're subscribed, you might not be. The Imagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, also please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media accounts. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with all of that out of the way, let's finally get into the video. Birth and Childhood Luffy was born in Fusha Village to Monkey D. Dragon and an unknown woman. Dragon left Luffy in the care of his grandfather, Monkey D. Garp, who did many dangerous things to Luffy to make him stronger, like throwing him down a deep ravine, leaving him alone in the wild, and tying him to a balloon. Shanks and the Straw Hat when Luffy was six, Shanks and the Red Hair Pirates stationed themselves in Fusha Village. While they were there, their sniper Yasop frequently told Luffy that he had a son his age named Usopp. Luffy wanted to join the Red Hair Pirates and after they had been in the village for nearly a year, he stabbed himself under his left eye to prove he was tough enough to be a pirate. Welcome to the Salty Spittoon. How tough are you? I had a bowl of nails for breakfast this morning without any milk. Uh, right this way. Sorry to keep you waiting. Spongebob should have just stabbed his left eye. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, Luffy and the Red Hair Pirates then went to the party's bar where Luffy continued to get Shanks to let him join them unsuccessfully. He found the Gomu Gomu no Mi in a chest and ate it with his meal, not knowing what it was. As he did this, the mountain bandit Higuma and his gang entered the bar and demanded sake. The bartender Makino informed them that the red-haired pirates had consumed all the sake available, and when Shanks offered them the last bottle, Higuma smashed it against his head. Shanks only responded by cleaning up the mess, and Higuma abused him some more before leaving. Luffy was outraged that Shanks didn't retaliate, and Shanks grabbed his arm when he tried to leave, causing it to stretch. The red hair pirates realized in shock that Luffy had eaten the devil fruit they took, and revealed to Luffy that he would never be able to swim for the rest of his life. The Red Hair Pirates later set sail and Luffy enjoyed his new rubber body. One day, he was sitting in the party's bar when Higuma's gang returned. Luffy picked a fight with him and they quickly overpowered him. Before Higuma could kill Luffy, the Red Hair Pirates then arrived and Lucky Roo shot one of the bandits that threatened them before Ben Beckman defeated the rest of Higuma's men by himself. However, Higuma threw a smoke bomb and escaped to the sea with Luffy. There, he kicked Luffy overboard and a sea king known as the Lord of the Coast came and ate Higuma before going to eat Luffy. However, Shanks then arrived and saved Luffy before scaring away the sea king. 
However, Luffy was left deeply saddened due to Shanks having lost his left arm in the process of saving him. Later, the Red Hair Pirates prepared to depart Fusha Village for good, and Luffy had decided that he would instead set sail on his own. Shanks teased him about being too weak, and Luffy declared that he would become the Pirate King and form a stronger crew than Shanks's. In response, Shanks gave Luffy his straw hat, telling him to return it once he had become a great pirate. Luffy's new family, bandits and brothers. After the Red Hair Pirates left, Garp took Luffy to Mount Kolubo and placed him in the care of the mountain bandit Curly Dadan and the Dadan family. He introduced Luffy to Dadan's other ward, Portgas the Ace, but Ace was cold towards Luffy. Every day, Ace would travel away from the Dadan family hideout, and Luffy attempted to follow him. Ace would put obstacles in his path to stop him, but Luffy continued following him. Eventually, Luffy made it to Grey Terminal, where he found Ace counting money with a boy named Sabo. When Luffy went up to them, Ace and Sabo captured him and talked about killing him to keep their secret safe. Porchemi of the Blue Jam Pirates then came walking through the woods, and as Ace and Sabo hid from him, they left Luffy to be captured. Porchemi took Luffy to his base and interrogated him about the money Ace and Sabo had stolen from his crew. Luffy refused to answer, even when Porchemi nearly beat him to death with spiked gloves. Ace and Sabo then came to the base and freed Luffy, with Ace beating Porchemi. After this incident, Luffy, Ace, and Sabo became friends and went on many adventures together, becoming known throughout the Goa Kingdom. One day, they went to a restaurant in Goa and broke out without paying. As they ran away, a man called out to Sabo, though Sabo didn't respond. After escaping the city, Luffy and Ace forced Sabo to tell them who that man was. Sabo admitted that the man was his father and a member of Goa's nobility. He had run away from his family due to their preoccupation with maintaining their status. Luffy, Ace, and Sabo then shared their dreams, deciding to sail as pirates to achieve them when they turned 17. They then exchanged sake cups to become sworn brothers, solidifying their bond. The three brothers continued adventuring and honing their abilities with Luffy struggling to attack properly with his devil fruit. However, their time was cut short as Sabo's father had the Blue Jam Pirates capture Luffy and Ace to force Sabo to return to his family. Sabo agreed to return on the condition that the Blue Jam Pirates didn't harm Luffy and Ace. After Sabo left, Blue Jam put Luffy and Ace to work moving boxes around Great Terminal. A few days later, Blue Jam told the two brothers to help him burn down Great Terminal that night. Luffy and Ace refused, and Blue Jam asked about the location of their treasure. They didn't tell him, causing him to tie them to a pole in Great Terminal. As night fell, the Blue Jam pirates set Great Terminal ablaze, and Ace managed to free himself and Luffy as flames surrounded them. The Blue Jam pirates then confronted the duo with getting the location of their treasure, but Ace knocked most of them out with Haoshoku Haki before the Dadan family came to the rescue. Luffy fled Grey Terminal with the Dadan family, while Ace and Dadan stayed behind to fight Blue Jam. The following day, Ace and Dadan returned to Mount Kolubo, heavily injured but alive. However, Dogra later told Luffy and Ace that Sabo had been killed by a world noble while setting out to sea, leaving them devastated. Luffy went to the coast and cried all night, and Ace came to him the next morning. Luffy made Ace promise that he wouldn't die, swearing to become stronger. For the next seven years, the two continued adventuring and training to get stronger, with Luffy learning to throw effective long-range punches with his stretching. A 14-year-old Luffy then bid farewell to Ace, who sailed out to sea as a pirate upon turning 17. Three more years passed before Luffy became a pirate himself, and he bid farewell to the Dandan family before going to Fusha Village to say goodbye and set sail. When the Lord of the Coast emerged to confront him, Luffy punched it away with Gomu Gomu no pistol, as he sailed, Luffy plotted to recruit 10 crewmates, get a Jolly Roger, and become the Pirate King. Romance Dawn Arc The first thing that Luffy came across on his voyage was a whirlpool, which pulled his ship in. Luffy managed to survive by hiding in a barrel which washed ashore on Goat Island. The Elvira Pirates' cabin boy, Kobe, rolled the barrel to a storehouse, and some of his crewmates went to open it, causing Luffy to knock them out as he emerged accidentally. Luffy asked Kobe for a ship, and Kobe gave him a boat he had made to escape, revealing that he was serving the Elvira Pirates against his will, but was too afraid to try to get away. Luffy didn't think much of Kobe's lack of resolve, telling the cabin boy that he intended to become Pirate King. Kobe's captain, Alvira, then came and destroyed the boat, but as she confronted Kobe, the cabin boy found the resolve to stand up to her. Luffy was impressed with Kobe and intercepted Alvita's attempt to strike Kobe with her mace. The mace didn't affect Luffy and he knocked out Alvita with one punch. Luffy then told the Alvita pirates to get him and Kobe a boat, and they complied. As they sailed, Kobe was concerned about the fate Luffy would meet when sailing on the Grand Line, known as the Pirate's Graveyard. Luffy replied that he would assemble a powerful crew, starting with the powerful bounty hunter, Roronoa Zoro. With Kobe's navigation skills, they made it to Shellstown, where Zoro was being held captive by the Marines led by Captain Morgan. After eating at a restaurant, Luffy and Kobe prepared to split up at the Marine base. Luffy looked over the wall and saw Zoro tied up, and Zoro offered to help him if he was freed. 
Luffy and Kobe then watched as a little girl named Rika climbed over the wall to feed Zoro some rice balls. However, Morgan's son Helmeppo then came and stopped her, having his marine guards throw her over the wall. Luffy caught Rika, and as Helmeppo's group left, he climbed over the wall to talk to Zoro. Zoro refused to join Luffy's crew, saying Helmeppo had promised to let him go free if he could survive without nourishment for a month. However, he asked Luffy to feed him Rika's rice balls that Helmeppo had smashed into the ground and told him to tell Rika that they were delicious. Luffy returned to Shellstown and relayed the message to Rika, and she revealed that Zoro was imprisoned after protecting her from Helmeppo's dog. Helmeppo then came into town and announced to the citizens that Zoro would be executed, and when Luffy questioned his promise, he revealed that it was a lie. Luffy then punched Helmeppo, and as Kobe held him back from attacking him more, Helmeppo said his father would get revenge on Luffy. Luffy then went back to the marine base to recruit Zoro again. When he found out that the marines had confiscated Zoro's sword, Luffy went to find them and offered to give them back if Zoro joined his crew. Hearing voices on the roof of the base, Luffy stretched his arms and pulled himself up. However, he sent himself flying over the top and grabbed the ropes that the marines were using to erect the statue of Morgan, causing the statue to fall and break. Luffy then captured Helmeppo and ran inside, telling Helmeppo to give him the location of Zoro's sword. Helmeppo did so, and Luffy used him as a shield to keep him from being shot by the marines. Luffy went to Helmeppo's room, where he saw three swords. Seeing Zoro and Kobe being confronted by Morgan and the marines outside, Luffy took all the swords and jumped out the window, intercepting the bullets being shot at Zoro and Kobe. Luffy's rubber body absorbed the bullets and sent them flying back at the marines. Zoro said that all three of the swords were his, and agreed to join Luffy if they survived this battle. As Luffy tried to untie Zoro, Zoro told him to give him his swords instead. Zoro cut himself free to intercept the charging marines, and Luffy kicked all of them away. As Morgan told his subordinates to shoot themselves, Luffy attacked the marine captain and quickly overpowered him. Helmeppo then threatened to shoot Kobe, and Luffy turned to attack him, turning his back on Morgan. However, Luffy was able to punch Helmeppo as Zoro cut down Morgan. To the pirate's surprise, the marines celebrated the defeat of their captain. Luffy, Zoro, and Kobe then went to eat at Rika's family's restaurant, but the marines came and told them they had to leave. They questioned if Kobe was going with them, and Luffy started talking about Kobe's past to goad Kobe into hitting him. This plan worked, and Kobe joined the marines. As Luffy and Zoro set sail, Kobe and the marines came to the coast and saluted them as thanks for freeing them from Morgan. Orange Town Arc as they sailed toward the Grand Line, Luffy and Zoro realized that neither of them had any navigation ability. They quickly grew hungry and Luffy attempted to catch a bird flying above them, only to be dragged away by the bird. The bird flew over Orangetown where the buggy pirates shot a cannonball at it. The bird dropped Luffy into the cannonball's path, blasting him onto the ground between a woman and a group of buggy pirates chasing her. The woman greeted Luffy as her boss, causing the pirates to attack him to find a treasure map she had stolen. They knocked Luffy's hat off, causing him to defeat them quickly. Afterwards, the woman asked Luffy if he wanted to join her, saying her name was Nami, and she stole from pirates. Luffy refused to join Nami, and they went into a house as she told him that she was planning to use Captain Buggy's treasure map to reach the Grand Line and rob even more powerful pirates. When he found out that Nami was a skilled navigator, Luffy asked her to join his crew, but she refused due to hating pirates. However, Nami said she would go with him if he went with her to visit Buggy. Luffy did so, but to his shock, Nami tied him up and offered him to Buggy as a prisoner, causing Buggy to put him in a cage. As the Buggy pirates partied on the roof of the tavern, Luffy tried biting through the bars and pleading to be let go. Buggy decided to execute Luffy with a buggy ball, and he leveled an entire row of houses to demonstrate its power. He told Nami to fire the buggy ball at Luffy, but she decided not to and rebelled against the Buggy pirates. As the Buggy pirates went to attack her, Zoro arrived and stopped them. Zoro then cut Buggy into pieces, but Buggy revealed that he could separate his body at will with the Bada Bada no Mi, as he stabbed Zoro with his disembodied hand. Luffy then called Buggy Big Nose, causing Buggy to send one of his hands to cut Luffy with a knife. However, Luffy caught and broke the knife with his teeth, and he had Zoro and Nami flip the cannon around and fire the Buggy Ball at the Buggy Pirates. Afterwards, Zoro picked up the cage and dragged Luffy away from the tavern. In front of a pet food store, they stopped in front of a dog named Shushu, Luffy poked Shushu to see if he was alive, causing Shushu to attack him. Nami then found Luffy and Zoro and gave him the key to Luffy's cage, but Shushu immediately ate it. As Luffy was shaking Shushu, Mayor Boodle came and told him to stop, explaining why Shushu stood in front of the store. Buggy subordinate Moji then came to confront Luffy on his lion, Richie, and Richie destroyed the cage in a single attack. The lion then hit Luffy through a house and onto the street behind it, though Luffy was unharmed. Luffy then walked back to find Zoro, and he saw that Moji had set the pet food store ablaze. He confronted Moji and Richie and defeated the lion by spinning his arms around before grabbing his face and spinning him face first into the ground. 
Luffy then grabbed Moji and defeated him with one punch to the ground. Luffy went back to the store and gave Shushu the pet food that Moji had taken. Boodle had enough of Buggy's tyranny and went to fight him, and Buggy demolished many of the buildings around them with a Buggy Ball. Zoro emerged unharmed from the destruction, and Luffy intended to help Boodle. Nami agreed to work with him, even though she still refused to be a pirate. Luffy came to the tavern where he removed Buggy's disembodied hand from Boodle's neck. Boodle protested against the pirates helping him, and Luffy knocked him out because he was getting in their way. Luffy insulted Buggy again, and the pirate shot a Buggy Ball at him. However, Luffy ballooned himself with Gomu Gomu no Fusen and sent the Buggy Ball flying back, demolishing the tavern. Buggy emerged from the wreckage and threw Moji at Luffy, and Luffy easily kicked him aside. Luffy then confronted Buggy and dodged the clown's long-distance knife strikes with his disembodied hands and legs. Buggy split off his body parts to dodge Luffy's attacks and managed to graze Luffy's face and damage his straw hat with a knife before stabbing the straw hat again. Luffy was enraged to see Buggy damaging his hat, which Buggy recognized as he was once on the same ship as Shanks. Luffy punched Buggy in the stomach, telling him to never compare himself to Shanks. Buggy split himself into many pieces and flew them around to prevent Luffy from attacking him, but Luffy noticed his feet on the ground and tickled them. While Buggy was caught off guard, Nami attempted to hit him with a bag of treasure, but he grabbed it instead. However, Luffy ran up and kicked Buggy in the face, and he saw Buggy's map to the Grand Line fall to the ground. Buggy then attempted to reform his body, but only got his hands and feet back as Nami had tied up his other parts. Luffy then hit Buggy with Gomu Gomu no Bazooka, sending him flying off the island. Luffy and Nami gathered up Buggy's treasure, with Nami agreeing to join the crew and find more treasure. They returned to Zoro and were confronted by the citizens, who were concerned with Boodle. Luffy admitted that he was a pirate and had knocked out the mayor, causing the citizens to chase after them in anger. However, Shushu then stopped the citizens from chasing the Straw Hats, and Luffy left Buggy's treasure behind for the citizens to rebuild their town. Later, Nami found out that Luffy left the money behind and got mad at him, but then left. Syrup Village Arc The Man in a Chest Nami fixed Luffy's straw hat, and Luffy and Zoro wondered what they should do next. When they spotted a nearby island, they immediately rode toward it despite Nami's protests. Luffy and Nami disembarked on the seemingly uninhabited island, leaving Zoro to sleep on the ship. Luffy and Nami met several strange animal hybrids, and a man called out to them from afar, calling himself the island's guardian and telling them to leave. Luffy and Nami ignored him, causing him to shoot Luffy. They then spotted the guardian, a man named Gaimon who was stuck in a treasure chest. Luffy and Nami talked to Gaimon and told them about their voyage, and he warned them that they would likely die trying to conquer the Grand Line. Gaimon then told them that he was once a pirate, and he had attempted to find treasure on this island on top of a cliff. However, he fell off the cliff and into a chest, and his crewmates had left him on the island. He couldn't even reach the treasure again due to being stuck in the chest. Luffy and Nami offered to go and get the treasure for Gaimon, and Luffy pulled himself up to the cliff face. He said nothing once he got the treasure, and Gaimon understood that the chests were empty. Luffy asked Gaimon to join his crew and find the One Piece with him, but Gaimon decided to remain behind on the island and continue taking care of the animals. The Straw Hats then bid farewell to Gaimon and sailed off the island. Seraph Village Arc, Meeting a Liar Nami told Luffy that they needed a plan ahead to find a real ship and more crewmates before they headed to the Grand Line, and she plotted for them to sail to the nearby Sir village. When the Straw Hats made landfall, they noticed the Usopp pirates spying on them from atop a cliff. The captain, Usopp, tried scaring them away by claiming he had 80 million men, but they knew he was lying. They went with him to the village restaurant, and he said their likeliest chance of getting a ship was by asking Kaya, a bedridden girl who lived in a mansion. Usopp offered to join the crew as their captain, but they refused. Usopp then left to see Kaya, and the Straw Hats came to her mansion and climbed over her gate and met her and Usopp at her window. However, Kaya's butler, Klahador, then came and confronted the group, saying he and Kaya could not give the Straw Hats a ship. He then degraded Usopp for being the son of a pirate, and as Usopp punched him, Luffy remembered hearing about Usopp from Yasop. Klahador forced the Straw Hats and Usopp pirates off their property, and Luffy left Zoro and Nami to find Usopp on the cliff over the coast. There, he revealed to Usopp that he had met his father. However, Luffy and Usopp then spotted Klahador meeting with Jango on the beach below and overheard them plotting to murder Kaya so Klahador could inherit her fortune. They found out that Klahador was actually the pirate Kuro, and his crew, the Black Cat Pirates, was planning to raid Sir Village during Kaya's assassination. Luffy shouted at the duo that they had heard them, and Jango hypnotized Luffy to put him to sleep. Luffy fell off a cliff and was unharmed but remained asleep, so Kuro and Jango believed him to be dead and left him there. Luffy was found by Zoro, Nami, and Usopp's underlings, and he told them about Kuro's plot. 
As they headed back to Syrup Village, Usopp came and lied to his crew that he had lied about the impending pirate attack. As night fell, Usopp and the Straw Hats camped out on the beach, and Usopp swore to fend off the Black Hat Pirates, with the Straw Hats offering to help him. They decided to wait for the Black Hat Pirates at the path to the village and put oil on the path to impede their progress. However, they then heard the pirates coming from the north, and Usopp realized that they were heading towards Syrup Village from the opposite coast. Eventually, he and Zoro managed to make it to the North Pass and beat back the Black Hat Pirates. Jango hypnotized his subordinates to get up and become stronger, but Luffy fell under the hypnotism as well and charged towards the pirates. He easily beat all of them up and ripped off the stem and figurehead of the ship to swing at them, but Jango then hypnotized him to fall asleep, causing him to collapse with the stem pinning him to the ground. Luffy was eventually woken up by Nami stepping on his head and rejoined the fight to which Kuro had arrived. Luffy started battling Kuro. Kuro dodged Luffy's attacks with his sheer speed and stood on Luffy's outstretched arm, allowing him to run on it and kick Luffy in the face. However, Luffy managed to intercept Kuro's left-hand cat claws with a rock, allowing him to rip them off. In response, Kuro initiated his ultimate move, Shakushi, in which he raced around the clearing at a blinding speed and indiscriminately attacked both Luffy and his subordinates. However, as Kuro slashed Luffy across his chest, Luffy was able to grab onto his jacket and slam him to the ground. Luffy then wrapped his arms and legs around Kuro and headbutted him with Gomu Gomu no Kane, defeating him. Luffy threw Kuro back to the Black Hat Pirates, allowing them to run away. He then collapsed due to blood loss and was caught by Nami. Later, Luffy, Zoro, and Nami were eating at the village restaurant when Kaya came to offer them a ship. She took them to the coast where she and Mary presented them with a caravel named the Going Mary. Usopp then came rolling down to the coast to start his own voyage, but the Straw Hats told him to come aboard and join them. They then sailed away on the Going Mary and partied as a crew of four. Baratie Arc, the Floating Restaurant As the Straw Hats sailed on their new ship, Luffy drew his vision of the crew's Jolly Roger, but Usopp drew a final version due to Luffy's poor art skills. Later, as the Straw Hats sat indoors, the bounty hunter Johnny came on board and caused a commotion. When Luffy came out, Johnny revealed that his partner Yosaku was on the verge of death, and Nami recognized that Yosaku had scurvy, and so instructed Luffy and Usopp to give him some lime juice. After Yosaku regained his strength, the Straw Hats decided that they needed a cook before going to the Grand Line, and the two bounty hunters told them that they could find one to recruit at the floating sea restaurant Baratie. Two to three days later, the Straw Hats reached Baratie. The Marine Lieutenant Fullbody pulled up alongside them and had his crew fire a cannonball at the Mary. Luffy deflected the cannonball with Gomu Gomu no Fusen, but accidentally sent it flying into Baratie. He was then apprehended by Baratie's staff and taken to the head chef, Zef. And since he didn't have money to pay for the damage, Zef made him work in the kitchen for a year. Luffy protested against this sentence, causing Zef to attack him. However, their scuffle inadvertently caused them to fall through the floor. They fell into the seating area, where they saw the sous chef Sanji beating up Full Body. Gin of the Krieg Pirates then came into the restaurant from Full Body's ship, but was forced out by the cooks due to not having any money. However, Luffy later watched from afar as Sanji secretly fed Gin outside and decided that Sanji would be his crew's cook. Luffy then approached Sanji and Gin and attempted to recruit the former, but the sous chef declined. After hearing of Luffy's goal, Gin warned him against going to the Grand Line. Two days later, Gin brought his captain Don Krieg to Bratie, and Sanji fed the starving pirate despite the other cook's wishes. However, Krieg then attacked Sanji after returning to full strength and decided to take over Bratie to take his crew back to the Grand Line after being chased out. Luffy challenged Krieg to prevent him from conquering the Grand Line before him, and the cooks intended to fight as well. As Krieg went out, a commotion suddenly started outside, and Luffy, Zoro, and Usopp went to check on Johnny and Yosaku. The bounty hunters were left hanging on the edge of the Bratie as they revealed that Nami had taken the crew's treasure and the Going Merry. Intent on having Nami as his crew's navigator, Luffy told Zoro and Usopp to take Johnny and Yosaku's ship and chase after her. Zoro, Usopp, Johnny, and Yosaku then left to pursue Nami, with Luffy staying on Baratie to fight the Krieg pirates and recruit Sanji. Baratie Arc, Battle for the Baratie Luffy pulled himself towards the Krieg pirates and hit several of them at once with his outstretched arms. He watched as Baratie's front deck expanded and the cooks rushed into the battle. As Sanji battled Gin, Luffy charged toward Krieg to fight him but was forced back as Krieg rapidly fired stakes at him. Luffy tried charging again while Krieg was distracted but to the same result. Luffy rushed toward him again and kept running even as stakes hit him. Krieg shrouded himself in a spiked cloak when Luffy geared up to punch him, but Luffy simply punched through it and injured his hand to hit him. Krieg got up and repelled Luffy, but Luffy then kicked him in the head. 
Krieg continued to try to hit him with explosions, but Luffy swung around the mast in the wreckage and barraged Krieg with attacks. Krieg was unharmed due to his steel armor and stood atop the mast as he unleashed bombs on the wreckage below. But Luffy then jumped over him in midair and slammed both his fists into his chest with Gomu Gomu no Bazooka, which finally broke his armor. Although now injured, Krieg quickly responded by shooting an iron net around Luffy so he could throw him into the sea. However, Luffy managed to get his legs out of the net and twist them around until he clasped Krieg's face with his feet. He then spun Krieg around and slammed him into Baratie's deck with Gomu Gomu no Uzuchi, defeating him. Luffy landed in the ocean but was quickly rescued by Sanji. Luffy woke up on a bed in Baratie and Sanji told him that Gin had hoped to meet him again in the Grand Line. Luffy asked Sanji to join the crew and Sanji wished to remain at Baratie but did tell Luffy that he dreamed of going to the Grand Line someday to find the legendary sea all blue. The Bratier cooks then fed Luffy and they abused Sanji to try to get him to leave. When Sanji went outside, they told Luffy to take him as a crewmate, but Luffy refused until Sanji himself accepted. Yosaku then swam to the Baratier and told Luffy that they had tracked Nami's course to an unbelievable island. Luffy immediately went to head off and Sanji then agreed to join him. Luffy and Yosaku boarded a small ship belonging to Sanji and Sanji bid a tearful farewell to Zeph and his co-workers before he set sail with his new captain. Arlong Park Arc Encounter with the Worst Man of the East Blue as Yosaku took Luffy and Sanji to Nami's location, he told them about the Seven Warlords of the Sea, one of three organizations with power over the Grand Line. He revealed that one of them, Captain Jinbei of the Fishman Pirates, had unleashed a fearsome fishman known as Arlong into the East Blue, and Nami had likely gone to his base at Arlong Park. Luffy was intrigued to hear of fishmen and drew a picture of what he thought one would look like. As Sanji prepared food for them, the giant sea cow Momu approached the trio's ship. Luffy punched Momu to keep it away from their food but only made it mad. Sanji tried to feed Momu but then beat the sea cow into submission after it wanted to eat him as well. And so the crew made Momu pull them to Arlong Park. Momu eventually reached Arlong Park and crashed into the shore, sending Luffy, Sanji, and Yosaku flying over the island on their ship. They landed in a clearing and crashed into Zoro in the process. And as the four of them recovered from the landing, Johnny ran toward them and revealed that Nami had killed Usopp. Luffy refused to believe Johnny and was about to attack him when Nami approached them. She confirmed Johnny's report and told the Straw Hats to leave the island, saying she only pretended to be their friend to steal from them for her real Captain Arlong. Johnny and Yosaku decided to take her advice and leave, but Luffy chose instead to lie down and take a nap. Sometime later, Usopp came across Luffy's group and revealed that Nami had only pretended to kill him to save his life from Arlong. He believed that Nami had an ulterior motive for working with Arlong. Nami's older sister, Nojiko, then approached the Straw Hats and told them that they should leave this island, but she offered to explain everything before they did. However, Luffy had no interest in hearing her explanation and so walked away. Luffy walked to Kokoyasi village, and he watched as Marine 16th Branch Captain Nezumi led a raid on Nami's home to confiscate the money she had stolen. Luffy asked Nami if he could help during the commotion, but she angrily told him she wanted nothing to do with him before running away. Nami later returned to try to stop the villagers from going to attack Arlong, but failed. She then started stabbing her Arlong pirate's tattoo when Luffy grabbed her arm to stop her. Nami tried to get Luffy to leave, but she eventually broke down and asked for him to help as he stayed. Luffy accepted this request as he put his straw hat on her head and headed for Arlong Park. And when he reached Zoro, Usopp, and Sanji, they immediately went along with him. Luffy then punched through the gate to Arlong Park and asked which fishman was Arlong. Arlong Park Arc, Destruction of Arlong Park After Arlong identified himself, Luffy beat aside two of his subordinates before punching the fishman. Hachan then summoned Momu to come to their aid, and although the sea cow was afraid of Luffy and Sanji, Arlong intimidated it into attacking. However, Luffy planted his feet in the concrete and grabbed onto Momu's horns. He then spun it around Arlong Park, taking down several of the Arlong pirates before hurling the sea cow into the ocean. Luffy was unable to get his feet out of the concrete though, forcing his crew to protect him and try to pull him out as they fought off the Arlong pirates. Luffy attempted to punch Arlong but missed, and the fishman tore off a chunk of the concrete that Luffy was stuck in and threw it into the pool, causing it to pull Luffy to the bottom. Luffy could do nothing but hold his breath and couldn't hold it for long enough as he fell unconscious and started swallowing water. Nojiko and Genzo swam down to Luffy and pulled his head above water before taking turns holding it and pumping his chest to force the swallowed water out. Eventually, Luffy regained consciousness and Sanji managed to go down and destroy the concrete chunk, causing Luffy's body to fly out of the pool. Luffy pulled himself toward Arlong and punched him with a variety of attacks that inflicted minor damage. 
Arlong mocked Luffy for his physical inferiority as a human and questioned what skill sets Luffy had in comparison to his crewmates. Luffy simply replied that his skill set was beating Arlong. Arlong then attempted to bite Luffy with his powerful teeth, and Luffy tried breaking them only to find that the fishman could instantly regrow them. Luffy knocked out multiple sets of Arlong's teeth and tried to use them as weapons, but his attempt to bite Arlong did little damage due to his lesser jaw strength. Arlong responded by biting Luffy in the shoulder, but Luffy managed to dislodge the fishman's jaw by slamming him into the ground, preventing his arm from being bitten off. Arlong's attacks forced Luffy up the tower, and the fishman eventually hit the pirate through the wall and into a room on an upper level. Arlong revealed that this room was where Nami spent the last eight years making sea charts for him to use to take over the East Blue, and Luffy grew enraged as Arlong spoke of Nami as little more than his property. After shattering one of the blades on Kiribachi, Luffy started destroying the equipment in the room to prevent Nami from ever going there again, knocking them through the walls and causing them to fall to the ground below. Arlong bit Luffy's neck to stop him, but Luffy grabbed his nose and snapped it out of place. He then stretched his leg up and smashed Arlong through the floor with Gomu Gomu no Battle Axe, sending him crashing all the way to the ground and defeating him. The destruction caused by the attack resulted in the tower collapsing, but Luffy emerged from the wreckage victorious and declared that Nami was now his crewmate. Nezumi then stepped in with his men to announce that he would be taking the Arlong pirates' money as well as the credit for their defeat, but the Straw Hats beat them up. As they swam away, Nezumi promised revenge on Luffy. Later, Luffy was with Zoro as the latter had his wound from Mihawk stitched up, and the doctor and Nako recommended that they find a doctor for their crew. The pirates and villagers then partied into the night, and Luffy encountered Genzo at a gravesite while looking for a raw ham melon. Genzo made it clear to Luffy that he would kill him if he made Nami stop smiling. On the day of departure, Johnny and Yosaku bid farewell to the Straw Hats as they resumed their lives as bounty hunters. As the Straw Hats waited for Nami to come aboard, she told them to start sailing from the back of the crowd of villagers. She then raced through the crowd and leaped onto the Mary, and Luffy laughed as she revealed that she had pickpocketed the villagers. Logetown Arc Nami purchased the newspaper as the Straw Hats were sailing, and the crew discovered that Luffy had received a 30 million berry bounty as his bounty poster slipped out of the paper. They decided it was time to head straight for the Grand Line, and came across an island known as Logetown that was close to the entrance. Nami revealed that it was the site of the Pirate King Gold Roger's execution, so when the crew docked there, Luffy went to go see the execution platform. Luffy reached the execution platform and climbed up it. A police officer ordered him to come down, but was then attacked by Alvida, who had become much thinner after eating the Subesubi Subi no Mi. Alvida said that she now admired Luffy after being defeated by him, but he didn't recognize her. After she revealed who she was, the Buggy Pirates then made their entrance. Buggy revealed that he had formed an alliance with Alvida to get revenge on Luffy, and sentenced him to a flashy execution as Kabaji trapped Luffy by forcing him to the floor and putting a block on his neck. Buggy asked Luffy if he had any last words, and Luffy proclaimed to the crowd that he would become the Pirate King. Zoro and Sanji arrived and attempted to rescue Luffy, but with Buggy's sword swinging towards his neck, Luffy could only smile and accept his death. However, lightning then struck and destroyed the execution platform, which incapacitated Buggy but left Luffy unharmed. Zoro and Sanji then dragged him away from the approaching horde of marines and ran back to the Meri as a thunderstorm began. On the way, they were confronted by the marine Tashigi, and Zoro stayed behind to fight her. Marine Captain Smoker then confronted them and used his Moku Moku no Mi abilities to grab Luffy with a plume of smoke. Luffy tried attacking Smoker, but the Marine turned his body into smoke to pass through the attack before subduing Luffy. However, a mysterious wanted man known as Dragon then came to stop Smoker, and a powerful gust of wind forced Smoker away from Luffy. Luffy and his crew managed to run back to the Mary and set sail. As Nami navigated the crew through the powerful storm, she told them that the entrance to the Grand Line was past the lighthouse in front of them. Sanji brought a barrel to commemorate this moment, and each of the Straw Hats proclaimed their dream while placing one foot on top of the barrel. Once each of them had done this, they destroyed the barrel and headed for the Grand Line. Alabaster Saga, Reverse Mountain Nami navigated the Straw Hats up the Reverse Mountain where the four ocean currents converged, creating an upward draft. They came to an unexpected surprise, which was a gigantic whale in their way. Fortunately, Luffy was able to slow down the Going Merry before it could hit the whale by firing a cannon. However, in the process, Luffy's favorite seat, the Going Merry's figurehead, was broken. Angered by this, Luffy punched the whale's eye to the shock of the rest of Luffy's crew. In response to Luffy's attack, the whale swallowed the Going Merry. While inside the whale, Luffy accidentally bumped into two strangely dressed people and into the whale's stomach as the whale began thrashing at the red line. 
Within the whale's stomach, Luffy was reunited with his crew and witnessed the scene between the two people he bumped into earlier and an old man living in the whale. From the scene, Luffy learned that the duo, Miss Wednesday and Mr. Nine, were planning to kill the whale for food and not even allow the old man, Crocus, to stand in their way. Seeing this and Crocus's attempt to save the whale, Luffy took out the two troublemakers. For doing this, Luffy and his crew were led out of the whale by Crocus. As Luffy's crew and ship were led out through a canal in the whale and outside to a nearby cape, Luffy and his crew were told about Laboon's tale. From it, Luffy learned that Laboon had been waiting for over 50 years for some pirate friends of his who left him behind in the cape to journey the Grand Line. Luffy also learned that after Laboon heard in disbelief that the pirates might have abandoned him, the whale was ramming the mountain itself in a futile attempt to reunite with them. Seeing Laboon's loyalty, Luffy decided to ease the lonely whale's pain by ramming the Going Mary's mast into an open wound. Having caught the whale's attention, Luffy and the whale began to battle. However, in the middle of it, Luffy told Laboon that they would have to put the fight on hold since he was planning to travel the Grand Line. With this statement, Luffy touched Laboon's feelings and the whale agreed. Having given hope once again to Laboon, Luffy painted a crudely drawn painting of his Jolly Roger on Laboon's scars as a symbol of their pact to meet once again. After rekindling Laboon's hopes once again, Luffy and the rest of his crew suddenly realized that their compass wasn't working. With that matter at hand, Luffy and the rest were then taught by Crocus about how the Grand Line works and how they needed a special compass called a log pose. Fortunately, Crocus had an extra one for Luffy and his crew to use. In the midst of what was happening, Luffy and his crew also encountered again the two people who tried to kill Laboon. Learning that these two needed to report back to the company they were working for, Luffy and the rest were requested by them to give them a ride back to their island of Whiskey Peak. Though a bit suspicious, they learned that Whiskey Peak is on one of the paths that the Straw Hats needed to follow to travel the Grand Line anyway. Thus, Luffy and his crew took the two aboard and sailed towards Whiskey Peak, leaving Laboon with the promise of returning once again. Alabasta Saga Whiskey Peak Arc Upon arriving in Whiskey Peak, Luffy and his crew were caught by surprise. Though the two people they took aboard left before they could land, Luffy and his crew were welcomed graciously by the townspeople of Whiskey Peak. There, Luffy and his crew were treated as gods with a grand party. Luffy even ate more than the cooks could put out. Eventually, Luffy passed out from all the excitement of such a celebratory day. However, when he woke later that night, Luffy came to a shocking sight. Scattered everywhere before Luffy were the beaten up bodies of the townspeople that served him and his crew. Upon learning from one of them that they were defeated by Zoro, Luffy thought that Zoro attacked them as an act of ungratefulness. Confronting Zoro, Luffy and his first crewmate collided into battle that apparently nothing could deter them from. The two were so immersed in their battle against one another that they completely ignored and defeated two other people in the same scene, Mr. Five and Miss Valentine, who were apparently distracting them for some reason. It was only when Nami stepped in and interrupted their fight that the two calmed down to listen to reason. Luffy then learned everything that happened while he was asleep. He also learned that one of the two strangely dressed people that tried to kill Laboon before, Miss Wednesday, was actually Princess Nefertari Vivi of the Kingdom of Alabasta in disguise. From her, Luffy learned that she, her pet dog Karu, and loyal retainer Igarum had infiltrated a secret criminal organization known as Baroque Works in order to learn the organization's reasons for meddling in their country's affairs. Also from Vivi, Luffy and his crew not only learned of Baroque Works' scheme to take over Alabasta, but also that the criminal organization was led by none other than one of the seven warlords of the sea, Crocodile. Having gotten involved in all of this, Luffy and his crew decided to help Vivi by taking her and Karu to Alabasta, while Igarum distracted Baroque Works with a disguise. However, in the midst of this plan, Luffy and the rest witnessed Igarum's ship engulfed in an explosion. Miss All Sunday, Crocodile's partner and vice president of Baroque Works, suddenly announced herself as she sat on the Going Merry sails. Fortunately, apart from the tense formalities between them and her, Luffy and his crew didn't have to fight her as she let them go for her own reasons. Having survived from the ordeals of Whiskey Peak and gaining a mission to help a princess, Luffy and his crew sailed away from Whiskey Peak to their next destination, Little Garden. Alabasta Saga, Little Garden Arc Luffy and his crew eventually arrived at Little Garden. The jungle island fascinated Luffy, not only because of the adventure it could provide, but also because it contained all sorts of prehistoric animals, which ranged from saber-toothed tigers to dinosaurs. Luffy decided to venture out of their ship and explore. Vivi and Karu decided to travel with Luffy to escape her boredom. Luffy learned that the reason the island was like this was due to the Grand Line's unique environmental conditions. The islands within developed much more differently than they normally would, and the very island they were on was still in the dinosaur era. 
As Luffy ventured the island with Vivi and Karu, the three soon discovered something much larger than the dinosaurs on the island. In the midst of Luffy messing around with the Brontosaurus, the other members of the crew met a giant. Meeting Dory, Luffy and his companions were invited over to the giant's place. There, Luffy was treated to some dinosaur meat and got acquainted with Dory. From the giant, Luffy learned that he was staying on Little Garden in order to settle an argument with another fellow giant, Brogi, in battle. As the matter was being discussed, the island's volcano erupted, signaling the next match between giants. With it, Luffy witnessed a titanic clash between two giant warriors that awed him. Eventually, the match ended in a draw and Luffy continued talking with Dory. Learning further about Little Garden's magnetic field from Dory, Luffy also learned about two of his crew staying with Brogi. Just as things seemed to be going well at the moment, something suddenly shocked Luffy and those with him. A barrel of sake that Dory was drinking exploded. Since the sake was taken from Luffy's ship and given to Dory by Brogi, Luffy and his crew were suspected of sabotaging the barrel. With this, Luffy and Dory got into a fight. Fortunately, Luffy was able to knock Dory down. However, with this sudden turn of events, Luffy started to suspect that his crew were not the only ones on the island, as neither they nor Brogi would do such a thing. Before Luffy and those with him could do anything else, the volcano erupted again and Dory got back up. With the next match being signaled and knowing that the giant's fight was tainted by someone else, Luffy tried to convince Dory not to go. However, Luffy's words didn't reach Dory's ears due to the giant's pride and Luffy was pinned down by Dory with the giant's home. Unable to get out of his predicament to help Dory, Luffy suddenly encountered Usopp, who had wandered into Dory's home. Reunited with his crewmate, Luffy and Vivi recounted what had just happened and were likewise filled in by Usopp. As Luffy and his companions were figuring out what to do next, they heard the awful scream of Dory being defeated by Brogi due to the tainted fight. Angered even more by this, Luffy was filled with more determination to find out who dishonored the giant's fight. Fortunately, Luffy didn't have to wait long to find out who it was, as two of the perpetrators of the crime, Mr. Five and Miss Valentine, suddenly came before Luffy and his companions, bringing a beaten up Karu, who had separated from Luffy and Vivi at an earlier time. Because of his current predicament, Luffy was unable to aid his companions and was hit by an explosive kick caused by Mr. Five's Bomu Bomu no Mi powers. Unable to protect Vivi from these Baroque work agents, Luffy and the other two with him were left for dead. As Luffy and the two with him were lying, they decided to get revenge for the atrocity caused by the Baroque Works agents. They eventually got back on their feet and charged immediately to where the Baroque Works agents were holding their friends. Luffy and company arrived and found that their friends were being made into wax statues by Mr. Three's Doru Doru no Mi powers. Luffy engaged in battle with the artist while his comrades battled with the rest of the agents. Despite some complications from Mr. Three and his partner, Miss Golden Week, Luffy was able to free his captured friends with a little help from Usopp. After finishing off Mr. Three, Luffy rejoined the rest of his crew to the marvelous relief. Due to the giant's weapons being worn out from 100 years worth of fighting, Dory was actually okay and had instead passed out from the wound inflicted. With everything done, Luffy and the rest went back to Dory's place to treat his wounds. As Luffy and everyone were resting from the ordeal and wondering how to deal with the island's magnetic field, they were rejoined by Sanji who brought with him some great news. From Sanji, Luffy and the rest learned that not only did Sanji trick Crocodile into thinking they were all dead by pretending to be Mr. Three via Den Den Mushi Call, but the cook also brought with him the solution to their current problem, an eternal pose to Alabasta. With the eternal pose, Luffy and crew bid their farewells to the giants and set off. As Luffy and crew sailed off from Little Garden, they were provided by the giants with an act of gratitude. With help from the giant's strength, Luffy and crew were able to pass through a giant goldfish and sail on. Alabasta Saga, Drum Island Arc. After Nami suddenly came down with a terrible sickness, the crew decided to alter their course from Alabasta and instead look for a nearby island to have Nami treated by a doctor. The crew was suddenly attacked by Wapol, who demanded their log pose. The crew fought back and Luffy knocked him off their ship so they could continue forward as Wapol's crew cursed them and warned them that they would get their revenge. The crew eventually arrived at a snow-covered land called Drum Island, which was renowned for their advances in medicine. There, the current inhabitants tried to scare away the crew until Vivi lowered her head with Luffy in humility. The leader of the islanders, Dalton, told the villagers to take the crew to the nearest town while Zoro and Karu stayed behind on the Going Merry. At the village, Dalton told the crew about the witch of the island, Dr. Kureha, who was the only doctor left on the island. To make matters worse, there was no way to contact her as she lived on top of the mountain in the castle previously occupied by King Wapol. Hearing this, Luffy and Sanji decided to carry Nami up the mountain to the castle. On the way up, Sanji, Luffy, and Nami ran into some lapan, which are man-eating rabbits. Sanji fought off the lapan so Luffy, while carrying Nami, could not attack or be hit at the risk of Nami being injured as well. 
Later, the Lapans caused an avalanche, forcing Luffy and Sanji to escape downhill. Fortunately, the group was about to run into a sharp and rocky cliff when Sanji rescued them by kicking them out of the way, but Sanji was knocked unconscious in the process. Luffy, now carrying Nami and Sanji, later saved a buried Lapan. Soon, Wapal caught up to Luffy and attacked him after Luffy showed his back to them. Unable to attack, Luffy tried to flee. However, Chess and Kuramarimo caught up and were about to strike Luffy. At that moment, a large group of Lapans saved him in repayment for Luffy saving one of them earlier. When Luffy climbed the mountain and reached the top, he nearly fell and was rescued by Chopper, who then took the three pirates to Dr. Kureha. Later, Luffy and Sanji awakened and saw Chopper for the first time. They tried to cook and eat Chopper until he turned into a giant form and smashed them down, which greatly impressed Luffy. The Straw Hat captain asked Dr. Kureha to join his crew, but she declined. Finally, Wapol arrived at the castle and began arguing with Dr. Kureha when Luffy suddenly punched him hard. Wapol then retaliated by using his Baku Baku no Mi powers to turn into a house with cannons and fused Chess and Kuramarimo into Chess Marimo. Wapol then shot Dr. Hiraluk's flag, a symbol that Chopper highly values. Wapol fired once again, but Luffy protected the flag. Eventually, the fight began and Chopper started battling Chess Marimo while Luffy fought Wapol. However, Luffy was distracted by Chopper's fight because of Chopper's ability to transform into several different forms thanks to the Rumble Ball, letting Wapol escape into the castle. After Chopper won, Luffy went into the castle and kicked a now thin Wapol who was harassing Nami. Wapol decided to open the weapons room and eat the weapons, but Nami had stolen the key. Wapol then tried to eat Luffy, but was stopped so Wapol turned his tongue into a cannon for one final attack, but Luffy dodged it and sent him flying, causing Wapol to get stuck in the roof. Luffy then, ignoring Wapol's pleas for mercy and empty promises, sent him flying far away. The Straw Hats regrouped at the summit and Dalton thanked Luffy and Chopper. After some persuasion, Chopper decided to go with Luffy and his crew with Dr. Kureha's blessing. As the Straw Hats left, Dr. Kureha initiated Hiraluk's finished research, a powder that makes pink-colored snowfall. The Straw Hats formally welcomed Chopper to the crew and continued on to their planned destination, Alabasta. Alabasta Arc, in Okama, a brother, and a desert crossing. With Chopper on board, Luffy and his crew journeyed onward to Alabasta with Vivi and Karu. A few days later, while fishing with Usopp and Karu, Luffy and crew picked up something strange as they passed through a sulfuric steam of an undersea volcano. The thing they accidentally picked up was an Okama known as Mr. Two Bon Kure. Having passed the steam at the same time Mr. Two's ship was passing through, Luffy and his fishermen accidentally hooked the Baroque Works agent. Not initially knowing who this person was, Luffy and some of his crew immediately became friends with this flamboyant man as he put on a show for them with his Mane Mane no Mi. It was not until Mr. Two's crew came to pick him up that Luffy and his crew realized that he was an enemy. Fortunately, since Mr. Two didn't likewise know who they were, Luffy and his crew were spared at the time. However, since they were fortunate to meet such an opponent ahead of time, Luffy and his crew decided to take measures to protect themselves from his powers. Taking advice from Zoro, the crew wrapped bandages covering an X on their left wrists. This was so they could tell whether the person before them was the Okama in disguise or not. Upon arriving at the port of Nanohana in Alabasta, Luffy immediately ran off ahead of his crew in search of food. Not caring for the recklessness of his actions, his search for food led him to a restaurant. In his haste to get to the restaurant, Luffy accidentally slammed two men straight through the back of the restaurant and through several houses. To his surprise, one of the men he knocked into was Smoker. Recognizing the Marine, Luffy instantly ran away and was soon being chased by Smoker and his Marines all over town. In the midst of the commotion, Luffy was saved by the other man he knocked over, his brother Ace. Regrouping with his crew back in the Going Merry, Luffy explained things to them about Ace. As Luffy was talking, Ace appeared and momentarily asked Luffy and the other Straw Hats to join the crew he was under, the Whitebeard Pirates. Though Luffy bluntly refused the offer and even stated that he would fight against Ace's captain, Edward Newgate, for the position of Pirate King, the brothers parted ways on friendly terms. Ace also aided Luffy by obliterating some Baroque Works billions and their ships. After sailing across the Sandora River and reaching the other side, Luffy and his crew began their journey to Yuba where Vivi hoped to persuade the rebel leader, Koza, and his troops there to stop the senseless violence. Upon landing, there was a little incident where Luffy defeated and acquired 100 Kung Fu Dugong apprentices. Though he couldn't bring such a large group along with him, he had formed an everlasting deep bond with the creatures. As Luffy and his crew were further explained by Vivi about the Dugongs, they passed through the once green town of Erumalu and were further enlightened regarding the problems and conspiracies facing Alabasta. 
After traversing across the huge desert of Alabasta and acquiring a new companion, Matsuge the camel, Luffy and his fellow travelers reached Yuba. There, they discovered that the town was plagued by sandstorms and deserted except for one old man. This old man, Toto, was an old acquaintance of Vivi, and from him, Luffy and the others had learned that the rebels had moved due to the drought and sandstorms in Yuba. Though Toto was initially hostile to Luffy's group, thinking that they were people wanting to join the rebellion, he changed his attitude towards them once he recognized Vivi and offered them shelter for the night. As the rest took up Toto's offer, Luffy decided to help Toto in his desperate search for water to restore the oasis of Yuba. Though slightly incapable of digging and falling asleep midway in digging, Luffy's efforts had helped Toto dig up some water. The next day, as Luffy and the others prepared to travel to the rebels' new base, Luffy was given some of the water he dug up as a present from Toto. With this, Luffy and the others departed Yuba. Just as they were beginning their journey to Katorea, the rebels' new base, Luffy did something that surprised the rest of them. He announced to all of them that he quit. As Luffy's comrades asked him to stop with this seemingly childish act, he told them his reasons. He explained that even if they stopped the rebels, they wouldn't stop Crocodile. To completely solve the matter, Luffy explained that Crocodile himself must be defeated. As Luffy surprised everyone with his insight over the entire situation, Luffy told Vivi that her desire to save everyone was naive as people die. This little statement started an argument between the two of them, which escalated in a small fight. As Vivi explained herself and told Luffy that risking her life to save everyone was the only thing she could do, Luffy asked her why she wouldn't risk the Straw Hats' lives as well since they were her friends. Having stated this, Luffy moved Vivi to tears with his statement of trust and friendship. Seeing her in this state and seeing how she was the one who wanted Crocodile to be defeated, Luffy asked her where they could find him. Alabasta Arc, Meeting Crocodile at Rain Base Having understood each other, Vivi told Luffy and his crew where to find Crocodile. Rain Base. Regardless of the fact that officer agents would be waiting there, Luffy and his group pressed forward to confront the warlord. Upon arriving at Rain Base, Luffy and Usopp were sent by the rest to ask for some much needed water after much journeying in the desert island. However, upon finding water in a bar, the two accidentally encountered Smoker and Tashigi. Soon enough, another large commotion was caused with Luffy and his crew being chased all around by the marines. However, Luffy and some of his crew managed to escape from the pursuing marines and headed into Crocodile's casino, Rain Dinners. Though Luffy and his crewmates with him managed to get into the casino, they entered without Vivi to help them identify what Crocodile really looked like. To make matters worse, Smoker had caught up with them and started chasing them all around the casino. As they were running around, Luffy and those with him were tricked into falling through a trap door by the casino staff. Having fallen for the trick, Luffy and the others, including Smoker, found themselves trapped in a sea stone cage. As they were pondering their current predicament, they were greeted by Crocodile. Having finally met the one who orchestrated the whole mess in Alabasta, Luffy and the others with him were unable to do anything because of the cage they were in. As the situation developed with Vivi being brought before Crocodile by Miss All Sunday and the powers of the Devil Fruit Crocodile ate, the Suna Suna no Mi were revealed, Luffy and the rest learned of Crocodile's awful master plan as he mockingly explained it before them. As it went further, Luffy and the others found themselves being placed in a little game the warlord decided to challenge Vivi in. Due to the events being carried out, Luffy and the rest needed to get to Alubarna, the capital of Alabasta, fast in order to stop the upcoming war. However, because of Luffy and those with him being stuck in a cage, Vivi would have to get the key that Crocodile presented and threw into a pit where it was being eaten by Banana Wani. Explaining further that he decided to flood the room they were in, Crocodile presented Vivi the choice between getting to Alubarna in time or saving Luffy and those with him before the room completely floods. As Crocodile was explaining this challenge to Vivi, Luffy overheard Toto being mentioned by the Warlord and soon learned that it was Crocodile that was causing the sandstorms that plagued Yuba. Angered by Crocodile's cruelty, Luffy urged Vivi to get the key so that he and the rest can beat Crocodile. Despite Luffy's encouragement, a single Banana Wani proved too much for Vivi. Though all seems lost, Luffy and everyone heard a Denden Den Mushi ring amidst the ensuing chaos. Recognizing Sanji's voice calling from the Denden Den Mushi, Luffy and the others realized that there was still hope as Sanji and Chopper weren't captured. As events unfolded with this new development, Luffy and the rest found themselves depending on Vivi finding someone from the outside to get them out. In an attempt to free themselves, Luffy and the others tried to coax one of the Banana Wani into biting open the cage. Though their attempt at breaking the cage through this failed, their hopes were, however, revived as Sanji finally showed up at the scene. With him, the key that Crocodile was found alongside a familiar foe, Mr. Three. Though the Baroque Works agent that came out of the Banana Wani threw the key, Luffy and the others with him were, however, still able to escape the cage via Mr. Three's wax power. 
As the room flooded and they escaped, Luffy told Zoro to grab Smoker along with them. Having saved the Marine, Luffy and his companions were allowed to go free to get Alubarna. As they were thinking of a way to get to Alubarna fast, they were greeted by Chopper who brought Hasami, a giant crab friend of Matsuge whom they could ride on. However, just as they were getting aboard, Vivi was literally hooked by Crocodile. Fortunately, Luffy freed her just in time as she was taken away. With Vivi safe, Luffy told his crew to go on as he faced off the Warlord himself. As Luffy prepared to face Crocodile, he was told that the Warlord would humor him for three minutes. After that, Crocodile would leave for Alubarna to complete his scheme. With the time limit in mind, Luffy fought ferociously against his opponent. Though he attacked the best he could, it was however apparent that no matter how much Luffy attacked, he could not damage Crocodile. As they continued to fight one another, Luffy's arms was dehydrated by Crocodile. Using the water given by Toto, however, Luffy was able to restore himself. Remembering the old man, Luffy declares that no matter how much Crocodile attacks Yuba with sandstorms, it will never be destroyed. As Luffy declared this, his three minutes were up. As the three minutes ended, Luffy witnessed Crocodile decide to do something horrible. Spurred on by Luffy, Crocodile created a massive sandstorm and sent it towards Yuba. Seeing this new development, Luffy desperately tried to stop Crocodile. Unfortunately, in the midst of all this, Luffy was impaled by the warlord and left for dead in the sand. Despite being heavily wounded and buried in the sand, however, Luffy still struggled with the will to fight. As he struggled, in a surprise turn of events, Luffy was suddenly pulled out by Miss All Sunday. Having been pulled out from his sandy grave, Luffy was left in the care of Pell, the hero of Alabasta that the Baroque Works agent defeated a while back. Alabasta Arc, battling Crocodile for the second and third time. With Pell's help, Luffy was able to recover from his wounds and get a ride to Alubarna via Pell's devil fruit, the Tori Tori no Mi, model Falcon. Through various events that happened in the city, by the time the two arrived at Alubarna, a great battle was being waged by the rebels and the royal army in the city square with a sandstorm covering the place. As they arrived, they got just in time to save Vivi, who was dropped by Crocodile from the palace walls. With Vivi safe, Luffy flung himself up the walls to face Crocodile again. During his previous fight, Luffy noticed that water made Crocodile unable to turn into sand as he and the water barrel that Toto gave were pierced by Crocodile's hook. Realizing this, he brought a huge barrel of water to aid him in his rematch against the Warlord. As Luffy thus fought Crocodile again, he soon realized that his barrel of water could easily be jeopardized. Figuring this out, Luffy decided to switch tactics by drinking all of his water and storing it within himself, essentially becoming what he dubbed Mizu Luffy which means Water Luffy. While this new tactic infuriated his opponent, it however proved effective for Luffy. Though Luffy was aided greatly by Water this time around, the fight however just made his opponent really mad. Though Luffy was able to evade Crocodile's devastating powers of erosion, he unfortunately got caught by his opponent. As Crocodile's hand held Luffy, he was severely dehydrated and was once again left for dead. Fortunately, however, some water bubbles that Luffy misfired earlier revived him from his near-death state. Rejuvenated once again, Luffy set off in search of his foe. Learning from Tashigi while on his search, Luffy headed to Royal Alabasta Tomb. As he ran, the wound from his chest unfortunately opened, and Luffy, feeling unusually faint, briefly fell unconscious. Recovering himself, Luffy noticed the passageway and ran down into the tomb. Eventually, Luffy caught up with his foe once again in the collapsing ruins. Encountering each other, the two fought each other again. However, having been severely wounded from his previous matches with Crocodile, Luffy used his own bloody body to negate Crocodile's powers this time around. As the battle continued, Luffy kicked Crocodile into the air. Upon doing so, Luffy was blasted with one of Crocodile's powerful techniques. Luffy, however, withstood the attack and prepared to retaliate. Using a series of moves, Luffy propelled himself up to Crocodile to deliver the final blow. As a last resort, Crocodile tried to stop Luffy by turning his hand into blades. This, however, didn't stop Luffy, as he broke through the sand-created weapons with his bare fist and delivered a flurry of punches onto his opponent. Delivering the punches, Luffy attacked Crocodile with such force that it penetrated a layer of pure bedrock and sent Crocodile flying, finally defeating the Warlord. Falling back into the ruins, Luffy was thanked by Nefertari Cobra for all he had done. Having used the last of his strength, Luffy was then carried by the king to his crew. Alabasta Arc, Farewell to Alabasta and Vivi For their valiant heroism in saving Alabasta, Luffy and his crew were treated secretly as VIPs by the royalty for three days. Having fully recovered from his wounds from the battle with Crocodile on the third day, Luffy and his crew decided to leave before the awaiting marines could catch them. Just as they were heading back to the Going Merry, which was secured by Mr. Two Bon Kure, 
Before the Marines could find it, Luffy and the others offered Vivi the choice of joining the crew. They gave her until noon the next day. Setting sail with the reformed Bon Corre and his men the next day, Luffy and his crew encountered the blockade the Marines set up to capture them. Through a tearful sacrifice by Mr. Two, Luffy and his crew were able to escape the blockade to go to the rendezvous point to pick up Vivi. Arriving there, they found that Vivi had come as promised. However, to their disappointment, she told them that she still had responsibilities as Alabasta's princess and couldn't come along. Despite this, Vivi asked them that if they ever meet again, would she be accepted to come along again? While Luffy and the others wanted to reply out loud to Vivi that she would still be accepted, they could not out of fear that the nearby marines would implicate her as a criminal. Instead, however, they quietly showed her the mark that they used to protect themselves if Mr. Two impersonated one of them, a sign of their friendship. Having delivered their silent response to their friend, Luffy and his crew sail away from Alabasta and onto their next adventure. Though depressed about not having Vivi on the crew, Luffy and the others came across a new development. Nico Robin, aka Miss All Sunday from Baroque Works, had stowed away on the Going Merry and demanded Luffy take responsibility of saving her by letting her join his crew. Without much hesitation, Luffy agreed, much to everyone's surprise. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Imagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Now, this is only just part one of Luffy. Luffy has way more story to talk about, so expect part two sometime down the line. Um, yeah, and you'll, be, you'll probably be hearing my voice, just saying. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm Adrian. Thanks for watching.